Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we will see how to make our own getters and our own setters. Well, remember we had this string public word, and if we create the contract, we are able to get the value of the variable. Well, turns out this is not the best way to do it, and for two reasons. First, you won't be able to change the naming of the uh, getter, and this is a function. This is like writing something like that, a uh, word and then return uh, word. So this is exactly like writing something like that. We have an error because we can't really have the same naming for the function and the variable, but it's the main idea. And the problem is when we create the contract, we are not able to actually choose a the name we want, like get word or something else. Plus everyone and like everyone who has access to the contract can actually call that getter. So this is not very good for several several reasons. Let's say you have a sensitive variable and you don't want people to see it. So this is why a custom getter is really important. So we'll remove the keyword public and now we'll create our custom getter function. So function and let's name it get word, get word. We close the parentheses and this function will return the variable word. So return word. We will have some problems here. And the linter will actually say that different number of arguments in return statement and the statement is that a return statement than in returns declaration. Well, it says that we have only one argument in, uh, and this is an argument, uh, one argument in returns statement, well, we have no returns declaration here. So by default, it's zero. So it is saying that you have created a function, you are telling me to return something, but you haven't told me what kind of data you return, what you want to do. And this is very common for any statically typed language, where when you are making a function, you have to define the type that is being returned in the function. So in Solidity, this is done after the name of the function with the returns declaration. So we write returns and in parentheses we specify the type of the return variable and here it's a string so we type string and here we have it. Now if I create it now this won't be considered as a getter, this will be considered as a setter and I create it and you see it's red, it's not blue and if I, if I execute it we still have the return value correct but the thing is when I will execute that, a transaction will be fired on the blockchain and it will be appended to the blockchain and you will lose some gas, which is not really what we want to do because all we want to do here is to just get the information. And there's a clear difference between setters and getters. Well, setters are here to change something on the blockchain. Thus, they are considered as a transaction. Every contract has its own state with uh, several variables. I will, by the way, talk about the different data structures that the contract, that a smart contract actually uses to store its data. Here it's in, the variable is in storage. So by declaring the function as a setter, we are able to change the storage, but we don't change it. So we are actually just spending some gas for nothing. In that case, when all we want to do is to return a variable, not changing something, we have to use a getter. So the way we use a getter is simply by writing the keyword constant. And you see now it's blue and it actually is executed very fast and it does not eat any ether. I will give you a quick explanation about why there's that kind of a difference, but we will see a deeper explanation later. So the reason why it works like that is, as you know, or as you don't know, Ethereum has a virtual machine and it's not really a virtual machine, it's more of a interpreter, meaning that it will take your Solidity code, it will convert it in a lower language like uh, assembly, it has its own assembly, and it will execute it. And you have to keep in mind that even if the Ethereum blockchain is a technically a ledger, decentralized ledger, it is not made for keeping track of every single state throughout this history. It just keeps track of the last state. In order to get the last state, like the version of truth you have now, we always check the last block. So if you want to modify something in a contract, this modification will be reflected only if you append a new block. 
this is why we need setters. But if you are just to check the current information of the contract, all we need is a getter. So what Ethereum virtual machine actually does when you fire a getter, it creates a virtual block, it appends the last state into it, and it just executes it and it loads the given contract in its memory and executes the function. And um, after execution, it just erases the block. So this is a big difference between a setter and a getter. In getters, we don't create a new block, while in setters, we create a new block. I mean, we create a new transaction, and this transaction actually can be appended in a new block if needed. And this is done by the miners. So here we have it, you know the difference between a getter and a setter. So let's make a getter. So now we have a getter, right? Now let's say we want to change the value of the variable word. We have to make a setter, right? And we will make it function set word. And now we don't need a constant keyword. And by the way, I will I will actually show you why we don't need it. And constant. So we are making a getter here, but in our getter we will try to change the variable word. So we'll see why it doesn't work. And I will actually need to pass a new variable as an argument. So it's a string and new word. Word is equal to new word. Oops. And let's let's return something. Word. So here we have it. We will create it. And set word is a getter as well. So if we now change it to hello Vlad Wolf, we have the local return of hello Vlad Wolf because the change is actually made only in this function. So this function knows, so okay, word is equal to new word, then we return a word. But after that, the function has been executed, this word is not changed. So if we check the get word again, it will be hello world. So this is why you don't use getters to change information. You use getters only to get the information. And let's change it to a setter. So again, this is the same thing. Uh, the only difference is that I removed the constant keyword, making the function a setter. So now we still have hello world. Let's change it. Hello. Vlad Wolf. Now it has been treated as a transaction, thus changing the uh, this variable. Hello Vlad Wolf. And if we want to change it again to hello world, the change will be reflected here. So now you know how to create a simple getter and a simple setter. In the next video, we'll learn how to put permissions inside your functions. I know this is not very useful, but for the time being, this is a very good way to learn. So let's say now we want to create a contract where only the creator of the contract can change the variable word and only the creator can do it. If anyone else uh, tries to do it, it will not work. So that's what we will do. See you later.